try not to get on on that excuse board because that's already where this whole industry is at. This whole industry is already built around taking a dog that's subpar and trying to say, well, we can train them. That's what we're trying to, to, to switch. We're trying to say, you get the right dog for the job and we train them to do the job, not train them to go against their genetics. Here at Red Dot, I'm with uh, Ricky and Steve and Isabella from the uh, Spectrum K9 crew. We're gonna load up Rue here in a second. She's, she's just going on for the ride. We're heading up to San Francisco International Airport. It's about 50 minutes above where we are. Uh, when we arrive, we are due to pick up two dogs. Just arrived from home. the UK. The UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit about what we're doing. So we're going to the cargo area of the San Francisco Airport. We're gonna be picking up two. Uh, dual purpose prospects so we're hoping that these two dogs fit uh, fill our school in august that's coming up um, spectrum canines having spectrum canine is having a handlers course so we're doing basically a eight week long course where we take these brand new dogs Good. and brand new handlers we put them together we make them work we kick them out to the street and uh, after they certify under california post peace officer standards of training so we're really excited we're going to pick up these two dogs we're going to pick them up today they'll be in crates they just got uh you know carted out from under the plane we'll pull them out of the crates let them go potty they've been in there for a while testing starts immediately so right away we'll be able to watch dogs and kind of see what sort of behaviors they give us and then uh, we'll go down to our one of our training locations and we'll run a pretty extensive um, selection test and kind of get a good idea of if they're gonna make it or not from there we're not really sure <laughs> this but this is this, this is it this I is mean, the fun part steve and i have been yeah you know, steve how are you feeling about this whole thing like yeah honestly we just we'll wait and see yeah. We do a pretty good job at like screening the dogs prior to, yeah. so we get a lot of videos and stuff. So it takes it from in my eyes. If the dogs came without video, I would be almost certain that they wouldn't pass. Now I'm like 50%. Yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully they both work out. If they don't work out, we're going to be scrambling to find dogs. So. We're going to get her ass in the car, and then we're going to get yeah. <laughs> we brought some breeding dogs too of ours. So if these ones fail, we can at least show you what it's supposed to look like. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Do we get the, some pups in there? Or some we pups have four puppies, and we have three breeding dogs. Can't so wait. we got a lot. Well, let's go. All right, Rue, let's go. <laughs> Industry has always been an old man's game and it continues to be, I think anything law enforcement related, aside from the dog man stuff, old man's game, it's a veteran's game. Once you're in the circle, first off, it's really hard to get in the circle, but once you're in the circle, you protect the circle as hard as you can. And that was something that we've definitely battled from the very beginning, um, but it's gotten way easier over the years as we've earned our respect and earned uh, our guest title in this industry. And through years and years of volunteering our time, doing stuff for free, you know, going to seminars, whatever you, whatever you may have, uh, and learning the specificity of training a police canine. And that's where we're at now, and that's why we're young guys doing this. All right, here we go, Delta Cargo. Electronic copies, no good this time, so we need paper copies. Amsterdam, and then it says 1410 is when we'll get here, so. That's, that's, the, that's the departure. So basically what's gonna happen right now is Steve's gonna finish up the paperwork uh, with the dogs, and then and uh, we're gonna go out there, open the crates, dogs out, let them out to go potty, and just kinda go from there. Um, they've been in there for quite a while now, since last night, so it's just important that we get them out, get them some water, get them going potty, and we'll already be starting evaluating them from that moment. We're just gonna hope that they're willing to come out nicely and that it's not gonna turn into a battle. By sounds of this barking, they must give it, be a little force to be reckoned with. So right away, we're kind of already evaluating. A couple of the airport workers went over to the doors and uh, the dog started popping off and barking at them, which is a little bit of a red flag, shows a little bit of defensiveness, but there are plenty of dogs that still fit our criteria that do that behavior. So hopefully it's not as big as a red flag as we think it is. If the dog doesn't do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not good but it's just the first little sign of him not being that like robust, like go-getter attitude that we want to see. Some dogs are just kind of more chill and then they get put in a drive and they turn on. Typically the good ones come out 
ripping out of the crate right away. And we've never had a dog come out, be slow, and still pass our selection test. So. Like, does a dog not want to go in the crate? He just hopped right in the crate, no problem. I, I lifted on his collar, he jumped right in. He's acting pretty normal so far. All right, next one. Good, uh, going up's good, but if you notice the dog coming off the table, pause it a little bit. Personally, if it's a really like stud caliber dog, I want to see it go to a police department. And then in that contract, because that's a, a stud caliber dog, even amongst ours, what I consider a stud dog is very rare, right? It's like maybe one or two out of all of our police dogs would I consider that to be a true stud. So for me, I would rather see that dog go to a police agency and just have a breeding contract where I can collect the dog, I can breed the dog as much as I want. For me personally, I prefer to have a female for myself because an impressive female is really impressive and I can breed it and it's not, to me it doesn't feel like it's a male that's going to waste, it could have been a police dog. So typically if it's our stud caliber dog, I want to put it on the street just with breeding rights, but her next dog will be eventually a stud dog that we'll keep for ourselves. So first thing we're gonna do right now is gonna do some environmental testing. We're gonna take the dog out. Dog's already gone to the bathroom. We'll let him go again. And then we're gonna walk the dog through the building. We're not gonna do anything to stimulate the dog's drive. So we don't wanna put the dog in drive because when we do that, we can end up inadvertently masking some of the issues the dog may have. We wanna see what he does on his own without anything to stimulate him to get him through issues, right? For example, the dog is scared of stairs. We throw a ball up there or the dog thinks there's something beneficial for him to go up those stairs, he'll go and, and run up them just fine. If there's nothing for him up there and he's a little bit afraid of the stairs, we'll be able to see that. So no toys, no nothing. We're gonna run the dog through the building. We're looking for a very open, outgoing uh, temperament in the dog. And we're gonna do nuke first. So we do the environmentals uh, out of drive, and then we also do them in drive. So some things can change when the dog gets on a bite, right? The dog might do very well, but all of a sudden the added pressure of biting a person makes the dog act a little different, act a little weird. And here so far as his, his environmentals are, would be uh, pretty strong. So something, when I see something like that in a dog, I, his environmentals were actually almost excellent until he got to that point. That's a strike for sure. It's not, it's not like a three strike rule, but that's definitely a, that was fucking shit. But uh, well, what I'll do now is when I test him later in the bite work, I'm gonna make it a point to bring him across that threshold while he's on a bite and see how his bite and his bite mechanics change. Right, if he's, if he's, got, if he's got like a very minor issue like that, but other than, other than that one thing, he's pretty strong and his bite is unaffected by it, that's all right, we're, we're, we can make that work. Not great, but we can make it work. Now, if I take that same dog and he goes on a bite, right, he's bite super full and he's pushing really good, and then I drag him across that threshold and all of a sudden he like freaks out, starts pulling hella hard. Now we're seeing that same thing happening in the bite work and that's really good. more intensity than the other dog, but uh, the other one was pretty about the same everywhere. That dog got a little weird on the stairs. Remember I was mentioning about the, the threshold coming off of shit? When he, uh, when I dragged him down the stairs, he didn't come off and I put pressure on him while he's on the stairs to try to bring it up another level, but his back, he goes down here, his back feet were like driving forward, forward, forward on the stairs. He like started to pull a little bit. So that's when I capitalized on it. I started pushing him into the wall, squeezing him over more, seeing if that added pressure would make him come off and it didn't. That's not great, but overall pretty good. 